Hello, good afternoon folks, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets uh, mid-afternoon, it's 12 o'clock now, on the Wednesday, the 1st of June 2016. Okay, let's try and decipher exactly what's happening in these markets and uh, which way we're expected to go. Now, <clears throat> there certainly has been a barrage of information from a fundamental perspective, so let's try and uh, let's try and understand it. Okay, so first of all, Asian markets overnight certainly weaker. Uh, we had the Nikkei down by 1.6%, the Shanghai more or less flat along with the Hang Seng. Now, the Chinese markets certainly have been bid, given the fact that they are going to be included in the MSCI World Basket. So again, certainly uh, catching a bid there to a large extent. Chinese data came in more or less in line overnight, so that certainly supported the uh, equity market there. Although obviously uh, the Chinese markets failed to make new highs or take out or put in positive gains. Now that was overshadowed by Mr. Abe's potential delay in the sales tax, uh, delayed by 2.5 or two and a half years. Now initially, obviously the markets have been rallying on the expectation of or front running that information. Those that were privy to the information in advance, obviously that explains the reason why the markets were moving higher last week, irrationally and logically. Yes, a lot of that was due to the Greek deal being done, and even that really is uh, is certainly uh, vulnerable to collapse as well. Um, now, one of the two reasons why the markets rallied last week is, number one, well, three really, you had the price of oil reaching $50. We had a Greek deal potentially being struck and obviously alleviating any uncertainties there and therefore triggering a short squeeze. And uh, Number three, obviously, they were front-running this information with regards to RB and a sales tax. Actually, there's more than three, actually. There's number four as well in terms of China and the inclusion in the MSCI index. So again, that, that was a lot of front running going on there. And the reason why US equities and European equities were, caught, were catching a bid all inside of trading. Uh, because otherwise, there's no reason for uh, the rally last week. Totally irrational and logical. Also, you had a, a collapse in the euro as well to a large extent on the back of uh, Mr. Yellen's obviously hawkish rhetoric which really should be positive for European equities, but not so positive for US and uh, UK equities. You had Brexit concerns as well. The markets were totally ignoring altogether. You had weak economic data last week, which again was being ignored, etc., etc. Now this week, the way in which we're positioned at present, we have Mr. Arbale's sales tax delayed by 2.5 years. So the concept of, of buy the rumour, sell the news type event certainly seems to be ongoing here. And uh, the USD JPY collapsing down to 109 now. It was at 110. It's actually at 109. Very interesting. Okay, so certainly uh, a collapse in the dollar to a large extent. That's helping the uh, the actual Kiwi rally this morning. And that's on the back of uh, potential inside information again on the GDT auction. So that should be interesting when that comes out, which is very, very shortly. Okay, so the markets have taken a negative uh, view from there. Then you also had the uh, economic data out from Europe. Uh, you had, uh, although having said that, Australian GDP certainly was stellar and helped the Aussie really rally overnight. Uh, but uh, Chinese data came in more or less in line. I mean, you had the non farm manufacturing PMI at 53.1 and the KXC manufacturing at 49.2. You had even had the Nikkei uh, beating BM, uh, manuf Nikkei manufacturing PMI beating out overnight as well. Although having said that, we've had CHF Swiss uh, domestic G GDP coming in weaker than expected. Uh, also, retail sales weaker than expected there. Uh, German PMI weaker than expected. Uh, French PMI better than expected. And European PMI actually coming in in line. So not as bad as everybody had, had expected. Uh, well, what is a cause for concern is that we've had such a weak euro and yet still we're, we're failing to rally. So you can't really blame monetary policy for that. Uh, a weaker currency doesn't necessarily always translate into higher exports and greater productivity. There may well be other factors at play here. Okay. Uh, the UK uh, PMI actually beat, uh, the UK uh, manufacturing PMI actually beat expectations. And that's one of the reasons why I've actually closed out my shorts on the FTSE as well. Okay, so where do we stand? Okay, uh, we've had mortgage applications from the US actually coming weaker as well. So European data mixed, um, although having said that, UK, French and EU PMI coming in line and potentially beating and also Chinese data coming in line. And not as bad as expected. So, uh, and given the fact that you've had Mr. Arby delay the uh, the sales tax as well, which technically is is, is bullish for the uh, the actual uh, Japanese market to a large extent, and certainly help. Uh, although it, it actually puts the uh, Japanese fiscal position in a, in a, in a in a worse off uh, state than before. But again, that's debatable in the long term. Okay. 
So how do we interpret it? Let's look at the actual technicals now and look at price action and let's see how that's in being interpreted. As always, please do visit tradesignaler.com for the latest signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignaler.com and you can download the app on the uh, Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Okay, right. Also, as always, visit cfds.com, especially since spread breaking CFD brokerage and, and take advantage of that 25% potential bonus on new trading accounts. Okay, now let's see exactly where the Euro stocks is positioned. Yes, we've had a flush. I'm actually, I've actually taken a long out on the Euro stocks now from 3036 and looking for a potential move higher. I did explain in my videos that uh, the European markets were exhausted and now looking for a reversal. That's obviously what's occurred. You can clearly see that now. So I'm going to update my charts here for you as well. Uh, although as traders, uh, somebody who day trades, you don't really need to. Charts are really there just for um, explanation purposes and uh, to teach. I don't always have to draw lines. It's pretty self-evident looking at a chart after you've uh, observed them for so long. Okay, so uh, it's clearly a break. Okay, looking for a FIB 38% retracement here. Given the fact that the euro is still languishing in the 1.15060 zone, you are still looking at a bullish bias on the European equities, given the fact that there's an inverse relationship between the euro and the equity market. Yes, there is a strong case for the uh, gap to close at 3010. So again, that's certainly something that I'm going to be watching and observing given the fact that, yes, we have had concerns with regards to oil, the oil output freeze, etc. There have been some negative comments. The Iranians certainly stated that they don't want to uh, adhere to any output freeze, and the Russians certainly have downplayed the output freeze as well, given the fact that natural factors at play have already pushed up the price of $50 and certainly can push up higher. So again, interesting uh, situation there. So the FTSE certainly has been under pressure due to those comments uh, on oil, with oil collapsing from 50 down to 48 and also Brexit concerns as well with regards to the polls coming in neck and neck now. The Leave and uh, and Remain basically came in line. I think it was 41% and 41% if, if I can recollect correctly. So it's basically coming in line. So the gap has certainly closed. So the, the greater the uncertainty, the greater the sell-off on the FTSE itself. And those of you that are on the fundamental analysis service know that I'm swing short the FTSE. Okay, in terms of understanding... Uh, technicals again the uh, 60 minute chart certainly explains there the daily chart itself uh, certainly a pullback but again that unfilled gap remains a target at 3124 on the back of a weaker euro the german dac certainly has been pulverized today uh, the gap uh, certainly is a potential target down at 10060 given the fact that we've sold off quite substantially already now uh, and it's certainly interesting how the DAX got up to 10.360 and now it's back at 10.160. So certainly has uh, flushed 200 points in, uh, very, very quickly. Now, given the fact that we've broken out this bullish channel, which I did explain in my videos, we would. And that's certainly what's occurred. Now, let's see exactly where we are positioned and where we're going now. You can clearly see that there's a H&S formation that certainly is playing out. Now, let's see what the potential target was for that H&S formation. So your left shoulder was here. Your head obviously here you've got the bear flag formation for the right shoulder and we certainly have flushed here okay so let's look at the hns target now so hns equals let's take the head which is around 10 360 and minus your neckline which if we take it down from the head down to the neckline you're looking at 10 260 so you're looking at a 10 160 target and that's exactly what we've hit so you are looking for a short squeeze now and that's one of the primary reasons why I'm actually long the uh, Euro stocks as well, folks. The Euro stocks is really, it's, it's like trading the DAX, but with smaller risk, okay? So, and that's what I like to do, is I like to minimize risk, but especially when I'm teaching subscribers. The volatile DAX is very, very volatile, especially with a 40-point stop. You can be, uh, you can certainly get, um, how should we say, caught out in the volatility very quickly. So certainly uh, whenever the markets create uh, hit, it's, uh, hit their H&S formation targets, there's usually is a reversal. And that's exactly what I'm expecting. The short squeeze certainly is over. Okay. Uh, from my perspective, again, you do have a, an unfilled gap up here, which hasn't really closed. And you have obviously horizontal resistance up here as well. So certainly a zone to watch out for, from my perspective. Okay. In terms of the, uh, the actual German DAX. And also given the fact that the NASDAQ is certainly very, very bullish at present. Okay. In terms of the CAC now, let's bring up the CAC for you folks. Okay. Uh, the French CAC, yes, down from that 200 MA, which I did expect and I did explain to you in my videos. If you look at yesterday's video, you'll see. Uh, with regards to the uh, the actual uh, sell-off and retracement, let's take the pivot loads a bit high. 
and you are approaching that fib 38 percent so watch out for that zone the 10 minute chart certainly seems to have all been oversold for now um again you do have a hns formation let's just look at the actual potential target here uh your target obviously hns formation is here and your target uh, let's just have a look your left shoulder is there your head was here right shoulder is here so your head is looking at uh, 4540 down to 4505 you're looking at a 35 point 4536 4505 a 30 point sell off and obviously we are back into that 4475 now there is the unfilled gap at 4431 so again if this market gets overtly bearish extremely bearish and that that will obviously be targeted so again be open-minded okay if there is any additional bearish news and you are looking at a potential further thrust lower in terms of the FTSE 100 it's hit that uh, 10 170 zone which is a 200 ma now looking to potentially short squeeze from my understanding uh, again previous resistance equals support on the FTSE so again looking for a potential thrust higher from my understanding again or previous support equals resistance the FTSE is expected to rally Okay, so I think from my from my understanding so far, markets are certainly pricing bearish news and are looking to potentially reverse. As always, please do visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.